Boom, pipe bending. Don't make these four mistakes as a newbie, and I don't really like that term because we've all started to do something once in our lives, haven't we? But try not to make these four mistakes if you're going into the world of plumbing and pipe bending by following us on this lovely Plumber Parts video. Let's go. There's gonna be multiple choice questions in this video as well. This is a serious plumbing video, but there are gonna be multiple choice questions in it. So make sure you get them right, you reprobates. So first things first, here is our pipe bender. If you've never seen one of these before, then where have you been and why are you here? But look, here's a pipe bender. This is called a former. So we've got a 15 mil former and a 22 mil former. These are the standard two pipe sizes you get in the UK. And this is our big bending arm, okay? So mistake number one. See if you can guess what it is just by watching what I'm doing now. So we're gonna get a little bit of 15 millimeter pipe. And we're gonna pop it in our pipe bender just like that. Isn't that great? You've seen someone do that before on other videos probably. Let's pull a 90 degree bend. What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Does anyone know what I'm doing wrong here? What am I doing wrong? There's something going very wrong here, Max. Max is behind the camera. <laughs> Sorry, I don't just shout Max out randomly. Max, in the middle of the night. What am I doing wrong here? Is it A, I'm not using a guide? Is it B, I haven't fully lubricated my pipe bender before using it? Or is it C, I didn't make guttural, animalistic grunt noises while I was doing it? You've got five seconds to answer. Five, four, three, two, one. If you'd have answered B, okay, it's not wrong, but I don't tend to lubricate my benders. I've never had to do that before. It's just a crazy thing to do. If you'd answered C, then you're almost right because I do just make guttural grunting noises as a matter of course these days. I mean, as you get towards 40, you make grunting noises just randomly anyway. But if you'd have answered A, I didn't use a pipe guide. Let's look at what happens to the pipe when we do that. So look, along the back of the pipe, we've got this flat bit here. It's all bent in on there. And if we look on here, look at that ripples horrible ripples like that and the reason we don't want that is obviously it looks awful but it makes the flow of water inside here turbulent turbulent flows of water inside a bend like that it will eventually erode away the copper pipe and it's going to leak so that's one of the things you don't want to do that's thing number one but how do we fix it you want to learn how to fix it don't you so pop this back in here and you can always just lock it like that there's nothing wrong with doing it like that let's grab our guide and see what the bend would look like if we used a guide here is a guide. Now I've put these little notches in it on this side here. These are at 10 millimeter spaces and there's a reason for that, but I'm not gonna tell you in this video. Maybe you'll have to hit the subscribe button, you lazy people, to find out. We can pop our guide in there. Look, as you can see, this is the shape of the pipe in here. And what that does, it exerts equal pressure over the pipe and inside our former here, we've got a bend like that as well. So when we pop this on here, we can slide our guide back in like that. And then we can actually, oftentimes you'll see us plumbers, because we don't use vices when we're bending pipe, we, you'll see us, we can just rest it like that now. We'll rest it on our hip to, to sight the bend before we pull it. But then look, we can just pull this nice and easily now. And without this even rolling, we can pull that round there on the back, a lovely bend. Pull that out now, look, let's look at the difference. Look at that, a beautiful bend on there and on the inside, Absolutely lovely. The only small indentations you've got are just at each end of the bend like that, and that's completely normal. And something I can't do anything about before you start hammering into the keyboard in the comments section. Oh, there's a bit there. If you comment bad things on plumbing videos, that says more about you than it does about my plumbing videos. Number two. You don't check the bend direction before you pull the bend. Very, very simple. Let's do it as if we're gonna do a quick set. Okay, so a set is where we bend the pipe in a little sort of S shape. So we pull it like this, and I'm gonna put it to a certain amount. This isn't a full on pipe bending video. You just don't wanna make these mistakes, okay? So now you take it out and you're about to measure how far you want your offset to go, like that. Have in your mind at all times which way you want to bend that back. Understand how it bends in the pipe bender. Because if you put this in wrong, you're gonna do something that loads of apprentices have done. You're like, right, I wanna do a bend, I wanna do another set, just there, lovely. Oh, I'm gonna set it back like that, right? You get it back in the bender, you've got your mark right above you, like that. Oh, brilliant, I've marked it up, it's perfect. I can't wait to bend that set back so it's parallel and in line with this pipe. Now, one thing a lot of people don't do at this point 
is they don't bend down and they look from here. If you come around here, Maximilian, that's sticking upwards. So here's a mini mistake, here's an extra mistake. People don't bend that down so it's flat along with that. Now a good way of testing to see that it is flat is to get a flat edge. You can lay that on there like that and then you can get down and look and make sure that your bend is parallel going across to your pipe and that's nice and parallel. Now a minute ago that was up there like that. We don't want that. We want it down like that. But anyway we're still about to make a mistake. Remember we want to bend our set like that. We're not looking. We haven't thought about it. Our phone's dinged or someone downstairs has shouted up to you. Do you want a cup of tea? Very rare occurrence, but it can happen. And then you pull your bend to the same distance you did earlier because you're a great plumber and you've measured that distance. And then you get it out and you look at it and you go, oh, that is not a set. A set would go like that and carry on. A very common bend that we do in plumbing. And if you're gonna try and take on a job, you're gonna to need to know how to do a set. So number two is not looking and properly just looking and forming in your mind where you want the pipe to bend to. Let's do it differently. There's a way you can do this in a, in a normal way. So let's pop the pipe back in there, get our guide, pop that in there. We're gonna bend to a certain distance. So let's bend to about there. And a nice little trick as well is to get your pen. You know you've bent it that far. Yeah, we've bent it to there. So we can just pop our pen on that now and mark the underside of the 22 mil former. Now we wanna finish off our set, don't we? We know that we wanna put a set at say here because we've done our measurement and I have got videos out there about how to do sets. Hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Have you not hit it yet? You. Anyway. <laughs> so what you want to do is look, you know that your bend starts off here. Just run a line at the back of it if you have to, just so you know that you need your guide to be on here. The role of the guide needs to be on here. Yeah, on that side of the pipe because you know which way you want it to bend back to. So now you can lay that in there with the line facing you, like so. You can pop your guide in, like so. Nip it up and then we use the same thing as we did earlier. Pop that on there. Make sure that's parallel to that. And now you can bend it. Bend to the line we did earlier. And look at that, you've now got a beautiful, lovely, sexy set. Also, some people have commented on these videos that I talk too much and also don't wear enough personal protective clothing. So I thought I'd show you, in the middle of this video, what it would look like if I actually listened to your comments. Number three, you didn't measure the bend properly. If I pull this bend, there ain't no going back. You can't bend it across your knee and unbend it. Believe me, I've tried. I was an apprentice once. I was a newbie to doing this once, but now I've learned the evil ways of sorting all this out. So let's get another piece of copper pipe. By the way, we are going up the scrapyard after this video. I mean, there's probably, well, the price of copper at the moment, that's probably about one swig of a pint of ale. Don't you love the fact that we're doing this in 15 mil copper as well today, guys, because it's cheaper and it's easier to bend, even though, I mean, we do want to get them out, don't we? So for instance, we want to bend a 90 degree bend and we're coming up to um, a butt that we have to do that bend round. There's a couple of things you probably need to think about. Number one, are you bending around a wall where there's going to be a clip, a pipe clip on each side? Because the pipe clip's going to step your pipe off just further off the wall, isn't it, as you go around that bend. Really good way of doing that is to get the clip on the wall, pop a piece of pipe in that clip and measure from that rather than trying to sort of guess the difference in distance off the wall. If that's in the wall there and you're coming up to bend round that, rather, if you had that knot there, it's quite hard to measure that, isn't it? But if it's there already, you can measure to that with a little bit of pipe in there, a little off cut that you've already got because you've already cocked up doing one bend already. So the best way of doing, say a 90 degree, the best way of measuring a 90 out is to know exactly where you want the wall to be. So let's imagine our clip is on here, like so and you can lay a piece of pipe across at 90 degrees, okay? And you've measured, say this is the pipe that we're running along the wall. You've already got your measurement on here like that. You know that that's where the wall starts. Yeah, so you're butting that to the wall. You can go, right, I'm gonna put that on there at a 90 degree angle. Oh, we have to bring that back a few mil, you know, to get that in the right place so we can wobble this back a little bit. Yeah, and I can lay that over the top again, have a look. Oh yeah, that looks like the perfect 90 right there. Yeah, I know exactly where it's gonna end. And I can pull that round 
and look, I've got a lovely 90, yeah? When it comes to actually bending a 90 degree angle, I'm just gonna say it takes practice. So just keep practicing that, okay? And then you've got that nice bend there and you know that that's gonna butt up and go properly into the wall like so. Here is the foolproof way of doing a set. You're gonna get yourself a piece of card, yeah? And you're gonna get a right angle like that, okay? And you're gonna draw on it. And what you can do, if you want, you can mark off these like that if you want to, all the way down each side. So say we've got this block of wood like this. We're not laying it on here, it's not anything to do with this yet, but we're gonna, we wanna run our pipe up and over this, okay? We want it to lay on this table and also be nice and flat against this. The first thing we do, and it's super simple this is, is you get your set square, you put it up against the thing you wanna go over, and you push this down like that, and then what you do, you throw it at the heads of the guys who are using that disc cutter outside at the moment. We now know that the height of the thing that we want to go over is exactly 42 mil. That's the first thing we've done. That's an easy way of doing it. We don't have to get our ruler out and faff about and doing all that. The next thing we do is we go, right, how steep do we want our set to be? Now this really is kind of up to you. All you need to make sure is your first bend has to be the same angle as your second bend. That's really easy for us to do. Over to the beast. We lay this in here, we get that in there like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Then we just pull our set, and let's say we put it to the same distance as the one we marked earlier. So we've got my little mark here, and look, it just springs back a bit. They always spring back when you let go. But as long as you pull that to that under tension, and then let it go, it'll be in the same place for the next bend. Right, and then we pull this out. What was that, 42 mil? So what we can do is we lay the bottom side of the pipe on this line here, yeah? And we can bring that back and we can see our 40 notch just in here, just behind here like that, just there. And I can hang my head over the top and just draw my, my little line across here like so. Or I can use this, so that's already set. Make sure this is parallel as much as you can get it to that and your line just carries on onto there, okay? Now all we need to do is make sure when we go back into the bender, a couple of things. Firstly, that our line meets the top of our former. Then we can pop our guide in, nip that a little bit, okay? And then we can get this, make sure again that we're nice and level. Sometimes a little tap. Blind man would be pleased to see that, Maximilian. And then we pull it again to the same distance as we did earlier. Remember, it's gonna spring back a bit. There's our set, hopefully. We should be able to lay it on this bit here. And that's perfect on that right side. Number four, you did not make sure the bend was straight before you pulled the bend. Did you watch me a few seconds ago, spending quite a bit of time making sure when I pulled this bend, what did I do? What did I spend most of my time doing? I made sure the whole time that the tail out of here was straight and, and on the same line as that. There is a little trick that I kind of use sometimes to make sure you can get this push it down onto there, like so, nip that up, like that, and then you can move that further away, and then you can actually see it a little bit better as to whether you can twist it up or down, okay? So if you use very basic tools that most of us have, a sort of variable set square like this, this thing will make it so much easier for you to pull successful bends accurately without wasting loads of pipe, but also if you can make, a, make yourself up a nice grid like this, you were guaranteed to be able to learn how to use that nice and quickly and get it done. One thing I would say, a little tip, is you can make that grid and put it on the back, back of a bit of hardy backer, which is what we use to tile against. The good thing about hardy backer is it's a cement board that's also fireproof, so you can also use it as a soldering mat as well. It has multiple uses in your bag. If you've enjoyed today's video, we have some more mistakes that you shouldn't make videos, okay? Like the mistake of making one of these videos in the first place. So click on this one here. It's gonna help you out when it comes to how you're gonna get soldering wrong because you've just come to this fantastic trade. So click on that, watch it, subscribe, and do one.